Well, hi there, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, you may be thinking, if you're a loyal viewer, that you've seen this car before, but probably not. You see, this is my 1968 Mercury Park Lane Brougham sedan. This is not a hardtop, and you've probably seen videos of the hardtop, but in terms of the four-door pillared sedan, my guess is a lot of you definitely haven't. But nonetheless, this is, like I said, my 68 Park Lane Brougham four-door sedan, and in the background there, you can see my 68 Marquis two-door hardtop. Thought it'd be interesting just to compare and contrast a little bit. This car has an interesting story. I actually bought it in Hagerstown, Maryland, and I always wanted a Park Lane Brougham. They only made them for 1966 and 1960, sorry, 1967 and 1968, before the Park Lane nameplate was sunset in favor of the Marquis, which back in 67 and 8 was just a two-door top-of-the-line Mercury. And by 1969, it took out the Park Lane name and really became their top-of-the-line vehicle, including the Marquis Brougham. But I always wanted one of these 68 Park Lane Broms, and I was looking for a hardtop, but hadn't found one yet. I saw this one posted for sale on Hemmings, and it said that it was going to be auctioned off at the Carlisle Auto Auctions. And I thought, well, I've never bought a car from an auction, but really like this car, maybe I'll go called the Carlisle Auto Auction and they related that the owners had pulled it. They had second thoughts about selling it because it was a family car. And I thought, oh man, what a bummer. Now one thing I did notice though in the Hemmings ad was that it said it was bought new in Hagerstown, Maryland and that the car was a one family owned car. And I noticed it had Maryland plates on it. And I really wanted the vehicle so I thought, well, what can I do now? I ended up posting an ad on Craigslist in Central Maryland offering a $200 reward for the owner's contact information. And the very next day, I'm not kidding, the very next day, I got a response from somebody who said, I know who owns the car. I won't give you his contact information. You can give me yours, and he can contact you if he wants. Well, that person did. The seller called me, and obviously I ended up with the car. So <laughs> sometimes that stuff works. My wife thought I was crazy trying to do that. I thought that the chances were slim to none, but it actually worked. And I here is the car. So why did I want it? I love the black cherry color with the black vinyl top and the beautiful black cherry interior. And this car is just about in mint condition. The interior is perfect. The exterior is perfect. It's original paint, uh, original top. Of course, it has some minor flaws, but it's just beautiful. It even has a window sticker on it from Shepherd College in Shepherdstown, West Virginia from 1968 to 1969 that looks new and isn't even faded. So this car was just sitting for many, many years. Now these Park Lane Bromes are Mercury's top of the line vehicle. And if you looked at the advertising Mercury was going through the time, they called these the baby Continentals. And you can see that in a number of styling elements, you have that pronounced bulge on the hood as well as it the snout sticking out a little bit. And then you have this characteristic Lincoln shoulder here on the doors that the Fords didn't have. The Lincolns often had the fender peak molding. The Mercury's did if you got the lower end, the Park Lane, you get this faux wood grain molding on the bottom that's kind of funky. And that was another reason why I bought this car because those are probably the hardest part of the car to find aside from interior bits. And they're perfect on this car, these faux wood grain moldings that I'll show you. They made about 7,700-ish of these four-door sedans, the Park Lane sedans. Probably 30, 35% were Bromes. So, eh, let's say that there's maybe 2,500 of these Bromes that were made. And this one, I believe, is one of 630 made in this exterior color combination. So, super, super rare overall to see one of these. And let me just tell you why I love these. If you're looking for a car with great power and with a very smooth ride, with great build quality and good looks, it's hard to beat these 68 Mercury's. Now maybe you don't want a four door and you want a two door, but you know, good luck finding the two doors. I think I have about 10% of the two doors that are left owning two of them. Uh, so they have and came standard with a 390 premium fuel V8 that made 315 horsepower, you could get the 428 V8 optional in these, which was on about 15% of the cars. And that made, I believe, 345 horsepower, 340, 345. 
same engine that was in the seven liter galaxies. So you get, you know, basically a very premium powertrain and you don't pay very much money for these cars. Still even, they're not all that collectible or desirable, but the ride is great. This one's a fully loaded model. Uh, this was a dealer demonstrator. Actually, so was that blue car. They were both dealer demonstrators. And it has air conditioning, it has power windows, no power seats or power locks, but rear defogger, AM FM radio, power antenna. So uh, it's got quite a few of the options. Oh, cruise control as well, too, which is kind of a funky activation system. So why don't we take the camera off and walk around this vehicle and talk a little bit more about it. All right, so here we go. First thing to note, I did find a vintage license plate from Maryland for the correct year that I put on the front as opposed to the gaping hole. I thought that was cool. But as I mentioned, the Park Lane Brome was introduced in 67. It was only offered in 67 and 8. And one identifying feature is this Brome script here. And you've got this beautiful biscuit interior. And just look at the shape that this one is in. I mean, the front seats, the back seat. It's got about 40,000 miles on it, but it would pass for a 20,000 mile car. I always like that Cyclops speedometer and dash in here. This one doesn't have the tilt telescoping wheel. You could tell that because it would have a kink in the gear shift lever. It does, however, have cruise control, which you would activate. Actually, the first thing you have to do is pull out this, which if you have the key on, will stay out. And then you depress that. And then there's a little light that comes on on the dash that says cruise. Notice this car does have the optional power disc brakes, has power steering too. Yes, those were options. Even on these trimmed vehicles. It looks like I've got a door light out there. I'll have to replace that. You can see what those door lights look like. Just a nice touch. The LTD Bromes would have those too. I do love the bypass feature here where you can see it says bypass and then lock. So if you've the key isn't on right now, so if I try to put up this window, nothing happens. But if I hold this bypass, then the window goes up and down. That would go away in the early 70s on Fords, but Ford did that for a number of years, and even GM did, and I thought it was a great feature. Of course, you got the hand crank vent windows here. And if you slip inside, like I said, you have AM, FM, radio and then you can always tell these mercuries and how many options they have by looking at the number of knobs underneath here so this is the knob for the power antenna which i'll show you how high this thing goes the lighter and then the right air down there and that little knob is the rear defogger and that is the factory position for it why they didn't put it in the row of switches i don't know but they never did and then that's the left air and then the cruise control as i said so these also have a great anti-theft feature aside from most Fords where you have to pull up on the gear shift to start it because the neutral switch is tired. The key is way in a position that you can't often see and notice I just pulled the speed control out and it's staying on. There's a little jewel light there that illuminates and if I turn the key off watch this little knob will retract. So that's how you activate the speed control before you depress the end of the turn signal stock. There's great controversy as to which way this is supposed to be oriented. The brochure has it oriented the way that you see here, but some people in their cars have this portion of the slider bar inverted so that it's facing upward. In fact, the 68 marquee behind me has that. I don't know What's correct if they built them two different ways? This is the way that it was in the brochure. Now let's check out, like I said, this is another anti-theft feature is the key placement on these that you can't see very well when you're sitting here, especially if the wheel's straight. It blocks it pretty bad. But let's try putting up this rear antenna. And just wait for this. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's extending. Still going, still going. There you go, you can hear the ratchet. 
If that doesn't get you reception, <laughs> I don't know what does. That is one tall antenna. Pretty humorous. So let's take a look at this marquee here, by the way, and you can see what I mean about the climate control. See how that one is, the bottom slider is flipped up. The marquee's obviously also had a different interior it's similarly handsome. Now on these 68 park lanes, this was the last year where you could get the optional breezeway window. And the park lanes in 67 it was standard, in 68 it became an option. This didn't drop all the way down, but it could drop down about three inches to eh, about here or so. And this car doesn't have that option, but you could get it and it was available and was pretty cool. Typical Ford door closures of the era, just excellent. This is the standard wheel covers. And this is one of the optional wheel covers on this car. These faux wire wheels with the red centers. Without the spinners, 68 was the first year that spinners were not offered in the US. They were outlawed for safety reasons. And just a handsome profile out back with these Cadillac-esque vertical tail lamps. This would be the last year for this theme for Mercury. 69, they'd go to ho a horizontal lamp theme. And also, because this is a park lane and the other one is a marquee, you get this little trim piece here on either side that was missing if you got a Monterey or Montclair, which I think is a humorous cost-cutting move, but was one they employed nonetheless. An interesting piece of trivia is if you got a Canadian Meteor, these taillights were actually white on the outside up here, as opposed to being all red. They were unique to Meteor, as were the front turn signals, because the grill was different, and this trim plate here. The four-door sedan not only gave you the pillar and the option of getting the breezeway rear window, but it gave you more headroom too. During this period, the sedans often gave you room for a hat, if you will. They were kind of the old man's car. I don't care, I think it's cool. I think it's got a handsome profile too, but the roof line is definitely taller, you can see there, compared with the marquee. This one does have the dealer optional passenger mirror there too. Let's take a look under hood and you can see this 390. And there we are under hood, the standard premium fuel 390 four Venturi, not four valve, but four barrel carburetor. Ford's not so great Autolite 4300 or Motorcraft 4300 carburetor. And you've got your pretty typical for the era two piston Tecumseh kind of York style compressor that works pretty well, but it's not as good as the GM systems of the area. You notice this takes two and a half pounds. The GM systems would take four, four and a half pounds. So just a lot more cooling capacity, but it works fine. It's icy cold. There's your cruise control box that controls the cruise. Replace the master cylinder. And then your Ford starter relay over here. That's pretty typical. And you get a pretty big radiator with the air conditioned cars on these. A nice three row. I've had this one record. It was still original when I got it and I just don't like 55 plus year old cooling systems. And this one was starting to weep a little bit. You could see that uh, it was getting a little tired, so I replaced it. This car also has intermittent windshield wipers, and that's what this thing is here. Kind of a hybrid vacuum. You can see the vacuum line. Electronic device that works really, really well. And, of course, there was a movie made about this. But this is the Ford setup for the intermittent wipers, and I think it's interesting. They've got rubber isolators on here to isolate the mechanism from the sheet metal, I guess, because it would 
make some clicking noises or something else and they just didn't want that noise transmitted into the cabin. And you've got a bunch of other vacuum tanks and reservoirs throughout this car. That one's for the climate control, I believe. And for whatever reason, these cars have a power steering cooler. I don't know what kind of work you're going to be doing to need a power steering cooler, but there it is. Let's check out the trunk because this is a definite key feature of these Fords that was different from the GMs of the time. You have this terrible placement for the key pointing downward. It's easy to just scratch the bumper if you're not careful. Now look at that trunk. Look at that motor for the power antenna. If you got the power antenna, the antenna was in the rear. If you didn't, you got the manual antenna, it was up front. And yes, that's a manual antenna and that's how far it goes down. You are supposed to go here and move this thing up or down. That works fine. And this car does have spare tire cover and the original spare under there. The 81515 spare. So you see why I had to buy this. The thing is just so clean. And the typical Ford jack setup with the spring of the era that I've put a cloth in here because it can make some rattling noise if you don't. Usually they're okay. But there you have it. I think the rear three quarter in this car is just great in all these 68 Mercury's. Check out we back up a little bit. The rear three quarter of the marquee. It's an awesome looking duo. 68 would be the first year for these side markers here too. These are just reflectors. But you do have the up front side marker here in the turn signal. This car also has, I think, the appearance group, which included the license plate frame and the door edge guards, which I've taken off because they look hideous. But this car did come with door edge guards. And as I said, it came from Maryland. The sticker was on there and I left it. The Oyster State. Well, and there you have it. Let's take the car for a brief drive here. And it's a great fall day for windows down cruising. Uh, sedans, you don't get the same open air feeling as the hardtops, but still have a lot of glass area in this car, especially compared to modern vehicles. And a very low belt line, perfect for resting your elbow there while you drive. I love the view out of this hood, too. You can hear the 390 burbling away. Let's go on the main road for a little bit. Just a great effortless, quiet cruiser. Perfect for the freeway if you wanted to go 75, 80 miles an hour, or just putting along here at 50 miles an hour on these back roads. Just an absolute pleasure. Hard to find another vehicle that has this kind of ride and quietness and build quality. Even the GMs of the era didn't ride this nicely. Now, they handled better, but the ride on this car is really great. And they did advertise Ride by Lincoln Mercury, and it really wasn't just all talk. It was for real. These seats are supremely comfortable, especially for a 60s era car. Seat comfort really didn't improve, I would say until the early 1970s and then it got noticeably better over a lot of the flat bench seats from the late 50s early 60s but this car has very comfortable full foam cushion seats and just overall feels like a very premium experience when you look on the interiors you're sitting here so if you get your chance to pick up one of these mercuries i think the best years are 67 to 74 i highly recommend it Thanks again for watching.